Hey everybody, I am here again for our video question and answer series from viewers. I can never say it right, so here we are. Uh, we're with Jack from Kentucky, and Jack works over at a funeral home actually in Tennessee. He's a high school student. Um, and you, is your, is your family funeral home? You have some connection to this. Yeah. Um, my, I'm a sixth generation. I'd be, okay. I'd become a funeral director. That's amazing. So Jack has invited me down to visit the funeral home and tour it and such at some point. So at some point I'm going to be coming down to Tennessee to see the funeral home when we can travel again and visit right. places again and such. So I'll be coming at some point. So, well, what is your first question for me? All right. What will cremation and burial look like in 20 years? Will there be price changes, more cremation, more burial? Wow, 20 years. Well, the price of funerals, right, like traditionally, historically, have doubled every 15 years. So I guess you would anticipate they would be more than double at that point from what they are now. However, I mean, if you look at the disposition choices that we have right now, there's, you know, there's so many that are just kind of in waiting to get legislatively and EPA and everything, you know, that are waiting to begin being offered like water cremation everywhere and composting and all these other things that are kind of on the, the cusp of becoming um, mainstream. So I think just add in those three or four things that are waiting, get those in the picture and who knows what at that point, I mean, 20 years, goodness, who knows what it'll look like at that point. Cause 20 years ago, if you would have said, we're going to cremate someone with water, people would have looked at you or we're going to compost somebody. I mean, people would have just been like, it was, it would have been crazy. Of course, if you'd have told them we'd have been in a pandemic, they would have thought you were insane. So, you know, I think there's just so many possibilities that have never even been dropped up at this point. Um, so I think in terms of financial, I am hope, my hope is that all options will be kind of across the board, the same pricing. It will just depend on service wise, what you want to do. If you want to do visitation or service or not, but that disposition wise, it'll be kind of all the same pricing because I hate that people have to choose disposition based on pricing because even doing a immediate burial is, you know, not the same price as a direct cremation. Um, and so it would be nice if even the basic options could be about the same, you know, closer to the same price because some places they are drastically different. Some are pretty close um, without factoring in the cemetery and such. But that would be my hope is that price wise, everything will be kind of about the same, but option wise, who knows what we could be looking at. You know, traditional burial might not even be an option as we know it now down the road. You know, they might do away with faults and embalming or who knows. Um, it could all be a completely different vision at that point. What's your number two? All right, next question. Um, we've had some weird funerals and families over the years, and what is the weirdest thing that has happened to you at a funeral removal or arrangement office conference? I feel like that I could pick one in every, every area, probably. I always say weird is in context. Like weird to me is is probably like what may be weird to you is probably normal to me, to me at this point um, after seeing things. Um, let's see, going into family homes and seeing how people live, I think sometimes is very odd place. You know, seeing a hoarder in their habitat and seeing how many cats somebody actually lives in a house with um, is quite odd when you really are kind of standing in the midst of it or people who are um, 
kind of the counterpart of what they present. You know, maybe you always see this woman in town and she's always put together and, you know, always dressed just one, you know, perfectly presentable and put together and nails and hair. And then you go into her home for bringing her into the care of the funeral home when she dies and her house is just a, a disaster and complete chaos and completely opposite of what you would ever anticipate for that person. So that to me is always an interesting um, irony to encounter. I think meeting with families, we see so many dynamics within families where um, maybe the husband and wife were together, you know, 60 plus years and you think, oh, this is an amazing love story. And then you find out they hated each other. They lived in separate bedrooms or separate houses and nobody knew or, you know, kind of the backstories of people's real, what really is happening is always like, what? For real? But we kind of hear all of it or, you know, the girlfriend shows up or, you know, just all those relationship things that kind of come out of the woodwork or the legitimate children or whatever the scenario is um, that kind of comes out. Not that it's weird, but it's definitely keeps it interesting, I guess you would say. Um, what's a weird thing that you have encountered that you thought was weird? There was a, a man who had passed away and his wife wanted to be an angel. And so she wanted to be lifted up over his open casket and fly like an angel over him. So who lifted her up? Um, the funeral director. The funeral director did. Yes. Like how many to like how many of them? You know, I don't remember. Probably four, five. I feel like it would be like reverse Paul Bearing where you're just like, like it's, mm. yeah, that's an, that definitely is an interesting one. I've never um, given flight to a widow before. <laughs> that's crazy. We get to see all kinds of personalities. And I think that's the cool thing. Like it's just every person comes to a funeral home at some point. And so you know, the weird, the odd, the normal, the everything, it just, we kind of encounter it all. And so that's why after a while, things are not as weird as they may seem to somebody who has always encountered the same type of people in the same situations their whole life. And then all of a sudden, you know, they encounter something like we do. So I think it's perspective on weirdness always. So Number three. Next question. Okay. Um, a family friend uh, just drowned in Florida. Mm. And um, he lives in Tennessee, lived. And what is the process of getting someone from Florida to Tennessee? Okay. Um, so, more than likely, they would have had an autopsy down there. So I always recommend that, are they coming to your funeral home? They are. Okay. So what I always recommend is that unless they're having a service in Florida, that family just needs to call the end game, you know, the end funeral home that they want to be at, um, just as if the death happened in town. Because otherwise you're dealing with two businesses rather than one. So call the end funeral home and let them figure out getting that person back because they're then going to go contract with a local funeral home where the deceased is for the removal and the embalming, and then they'll figure out transportation. So it might cost less to drive the person or for you to drive down and get the person in Florida and bring them back depending where in Florida, or you might be able to fly them back at a less cost. So um, depending on location, you would price out which is more cost effective to do. And sometimes driving is quicker and you know more convenient and more cost effective for the family. Um, sometimes families are, if they're there and they have a van and they're like, hey, can we just bring mom back with us? And they'll drive them back themselves to save cost. Um, you know, it depends on a cot, if they have a cot or if they want to place them in just a cardboard, 
you know, one of the cardboard like cremation container for transport, but um, you can work out different things. I've had people come in just with a board, like a plywood board to place the person on just to kind of move them in and out of the vehicle. Um, you know, have them in sheet or something and place them in and out. Um, but it does, can save a good amount of money depending how far that person's going. You know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars sometimes for the family to drive the person themselves if they're coming back anyway. Um, but it's always good. Call the end funeral home now because they are going to get better pricing usually by contracting that other funeral home in, in your case, Florida, to do the removal and embalming. There'll be like a trade call pricing which is oftentimes much less expensive rather than a family paying those item line items from a general price list for that funeral home and then also having the pricing at let's say your funeral home on the home side um, so it's a much smoother thing for the family to be able to work with one person rather than two and pay one bill rather than two well, thanks guys for joining us and watch for our next viewer question and answer session with me um, as we go across the country to every state. Bye guys.